Hello, and thank you for joining me, Shani Lee, for this yoga flow focused on recovery after a long walk or a hike. I recently returned from doing the Camino de Santiago here in Spain. So for five weeks, I walked about 950 kilometers or about 600 miles. And so this flow was inspired by a practice that I started doing every night to recover from walking about 15 to 20 miles a day or about 25 to 30 kilometers a day. Uh, I also had the opportunity to hike in the Alps and the Pyrenees. So I did a lot of walking, a lot of hiking. So this flow will be focusing on, it's a full body flow with special focus on the lower body. Uh, so whether you've been walking or hiking a lot, I hope you enjoy and I will see you on the mat. So I know we've probably been on our feet a lot, but we will start on our feet and then we'll make our way to the mat. So just take time to settle in here to Tadasana or mountain pose, grounding down in your feet. Maybe you can focus your attention there, see how they feel. Do a little check-in if you are hurting. Maybe try to draw your attention away to the other parts of your body that feel good. Maybe that feels strong or draw attention to where you do feel tight and know that you might need to ease into those places throughout the flow. And just one more round of breath here, eyes closed, checking in. Nice big exhale out. And you can keep your eyes closed or open, but maybe start to drop your right ear to your right shoulder. Get a nice neck stretch, especially if you are doing this after walking or hiking. Maybe you were wearing your pack all day. And your shoulders and neck are sore and tight. One more moment here. And then let's draw our chin into our chest. Feel the release in the back of the neck, nice and easy. Today is not about intensity. It's about easing into things, listening to your body. And one more moment here. And then slowly draw your left ear to your left shoulder. See if anything feels different or tighter. If at any point there's pain, ease out of it. Just go to where your body is accessible. One more moment here. And then slowly bring your head back up to center. Maybe you look left and right. Maybe up and down. Maybe you draw some circles. <sighs> And then as you're ready, you can start to come back to center. Maybe you roll the shoulders a bit. Switching direction. And settle back in. And maybe slowly start opening your eyes. On your next inhale, bring your hands up to the sky. Feel the stretch here. Maybe interlock the fingers, push your palms up. Try not to arch too much with the lower back, but keep your core active. And now let's grab the right wrist with the left hand and stretch it over to the left. Keeping our chest open, right? So we're not trying to cave in and not trying to arch back. Imagine that you're trying to stretch between two panes of glass or in Spain to a side street, two walls and a very narrow side street. Inhale, bring it up. And exhale, take it to the other side, switch the grip. There were a lot of those. If you've ever been to Europe or Spain, you know the narrow alleyways that exist. One more round of breath here. Bring your back up, inhale. Let's interlace our fingers once more. Bring our hands behind our head and open up the elbows here. So again, not arching the low back, but opening from the chest. One more moment here, and then we'll lean and I over nice and slow to the right. Try to stay grounded equally in both feet. You might feel the weight on your opposite foot starting to lift. So try to stay grounded here. Cadera, your hips still point forward. Next inhale brings you up and let's stretch it over to the other side. As you're ready, bring it up. And now release your fingers, but now grab your right elbow and 
and stretch it over towards the left. I almost said left elbow there because I'm doing my left, but with the camera, I'm mirroring you so it looks like you're right. Bring it back through center as you inhale, switch your grip and exhale, do a nice tricep stretch here on the other side, leaning in the other direction. One more moment. Bring it back center, nice big stretch out. And let your hands fall to your side, maybe you roll something out again. If there's any other stretch you need to do standing, do it now, otherwise I will turn, but you can stay how you are in your mat so that you can see the other direction. And we'll bring our hands back up. Inhale, Urdh Bhastasana. And exhale, slowly start to fold to the ground, bending over your knees, over your thighs, as you bring your head down to the mat. <sighs> hands either on the mat if they reach, or you can have a block or really anything in your vicinity that helps bring the floor closer to you. Last round of breath here in Uttanasana, forward fold. Exhale, side out. And now start to rise halfway, or just a little bit, trying to find a flat back. Again, if that's not available, you can have your hands right under your knees, keep them on the block or the mat, and we're going to extend our right hand into the sky and inhale just where it's accessible. So this might be super tight. One more out of breath and bring it back down and we'll go to the other side and help open the left arm. Maybe look up. You can also bend your right leg to make this a little more accessible as well. Last moment here, and exhale, bring it back down to the mat. Now stay here, maybe you bring your hands to your hips, maybe you bring your arms behind your low back and grab kind of your forearm, wrists, elbows, or if it's accessible, interlace your fingers. Maybe stay here, or maybe lift your hands into the sky. One more round of breath here. And exhale, let your hands come back down to the mat and we're going to come onto our knees. So hopefully that's available to you. If not, you can stay standing and we're going to work on stretching out our feet. So you can just kind of tuck your toes under and work on stretching out the feet and the calves. If you need a mat for your knees or a blanket, you can grab that. And start to come down into hero's pose or virasana. So tucking our feet underneath, sitting down on our heels nice and tall in the spine. If you need to adjust for a second, go there. Exhale, side out. Again, I'm going to turn my mat, so take your time to find what works for you. And then we're going to roll back onto the tops of our feet. So as you're ready, maybe you just start to lean back. Maybe you use the blocks. If you have two near you or something that you can put behind your hands and open up your chest and work on stretching out your quads. If it's accessible without the blocks, you can go there. Or you can start to lift your knees off the ground and focus on opening up the fronts of your feet, where the feet and the ankles connect with the legs. Maybe you add some rocking. Again, just go to what feels good in your body. If you want to add a little core work in this, you can remove your hands. Maybe float them out in front. Your practice, your body, find what works for you. And we'll slowly make our way back onto our knees, setting everything down. And then we'll bring our hands in front of us for support. Lift your hips up enough so that you can tuck your toes underneath you now and start to push your hips back. So this might be super tight. I remember this was very tight and I was very gently easing into this after my walk every day. If you want to intensify this using your hands as support, you can lift your knees again and really push into your toes and your, your feet. One more round of breath. Again, if you're standing, you can kind of bend over and work on opening up the feet, whatever works for your body. If your knees are sore, one more round of breath and then drop your knees to the mat. Everyone's standing or not. 
and we'll find a tabletop. So knees underneath your hips, hands underneath your shoulders, find a nice flat back, tuck the core in, right? So we don't want to arch yet. And take a moment just to connect with the earth, reconnect with your breath. And now we'll find some cows and cats, gently releasing the spine. Start to drop your belly button towards the earth as you start to open up your chest to the front of your mouth. Maybe you lift your chin, breathing in. And exhale, start to tuck your belly button and your tailbone in. Maybe your chin too as you find your cat pose exhaling. So do that four more times. Inhale, cow, bitilasana. And exhale, cat, marjariasana. The inhale has you drop your belly towards the mat as you shine your chest forward. The exhale has you arching your back, pushing into your hands to open up between your shoulder blades. Inhale. And exhale. Let's do one more inhale. And exhale. And now as you're ready, come back to tabletop. And we're going to work towards downward facing dog. So to get there, tuck your toes if they're not already there. Hover your knees a little bit off the ground, working the abs just a bit. And start to push your hips back, coming into what's called crouching tiger. And then from there, start to stretch it towards your downward facing dog. Adamuga Svanasana. That means you need to walk your feet back, walk your hands forward. All 10 fingers on the mat, maybe you pedal your feet, pushing one heel to the mat or towards the mat as you bend the other leg. Again, if this means your legs are super bent, bend your legs, focusing on a long lean back. And if this doesn't work for you, you can be more in like a child's pose, again, working on opening up the shoulders with the knees on the ground. Or you can even be in tabletop and switch the legs back and forth as you stretch one out and then the other. So making this accessible for how you feel right now. One more round of breath. And then we'll make our way to our bellies via plank pose. So start to find wherever you are. And on your next inhale, start to shift your weight forward, whether you're on your knees or not. And you can drop your knees and then drop your chest, or you can keep your elbows in and slowly lower woo, everything to the mat. Untuck your toes, roll your shoulders back, point your elbows back, and lift your chest, finding cobra pose, pushing the tops of your feet into the mat. Breathing here. Sometimes I was so tight in my hip flexors, this was all I could do. And rising cobra, which we'll move to next, wasn't accessible, so either stay here. If you want, you can have your hands stretched out and then push up from there in seal pose. Or if you feel available to it, have your hands still underneath your shoulders and push your entire chest off the mat, sinking the hips towards the earth in rising cobra, bhujangasana. Breathe here. I remember some days, as I said, I was too tight to even do this. So you go where you are at. Maybe you roll side to side, really get into one side versus the other. One more round of breath here. And then we're going to lay it back down. If you have the space, our arms will roll out in a T. Otherwise, you can goal post or cactus your arms. You just won't roll as much onto one side because you have a little less availability. So find your position. I have my goal post arms, but again, you can have them in a T. Lay everything down and we're going to roll onto our right side. So whatever that means for you, using your left hand to push your weight and you can keep your legs stacked or you can bend your top leg and drop it behind the other knee. Opening up the chest here, opening up your hips, or you can have both knees bent and stacked on each other. I don't quite have the room to show you that right now. <sighs> but hopefully you know what that means if you want to go there. One more round of breath. And exhale, slowly unwind, come back on your stomach, and we'll switch sides. So either T-arm or a goal post arm. Roll onto your left side, head still stays on the mat, and maybe you bend your top knee, dropping your top foot behind your bottom knee, or maybe you stack your legs, either extended or bent, whatever works for you. So you'll have a little less mobility with the goal post arm compared to a T arm. It's a little more intense. 
Breathe through it. And on your next exhale, as you already come back to the mat. And we'll slowly do one more cobra pose. Bring your hands back underneath you. Push your chest up. Or be in little cobra if you want, or seal pose. And we'll come back to downward facing dog or tabletop. If that position doesn't serve you, come back into tabletop. Otherwise, bring yourself back to your Adho Svanasana if you know that is in your practice. <sighs> Side up. We'll do three little vinyasa flows here to wake the body up just a little bit more. So as you're ready, inhale, shift your weight forward into plank. Even if you're on your knees, shift your weight forward. And then everyone drop your knees. Start to bend your elbows to drop your chest. Hips stay up just a moment, then drop your hips and slither on through towards rising cobra or baby cobra. So we'll do that two more times. Start to make your way back. Maybe you come to child's pose first or your crouching tiger, then downward facing dog. And two more times. Inhale, shift your weight forward. Everyone drop your knees, drop your chest, keeping your hips up and then slide your way through to baby cobra or rising cobra, tuck your toes, start to lift your hips back and extend into downward facing dog. Last time, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. We'll all meet in downward facing dog or tabletop pose. Take one more moment here and then we'll move to either three-legged dog or tabletop with the right leg extended. So go where you want, inhale, everyone lift the right leg into the sky, either left knee in the air or on the mat. And then maybe you bend your knee to open up your hip, scorpion leg your dog here. Again, if you're on your knee, that just looks like this. It's a little more glute activation, but you're still opening up. And we'll all come into pigeon pose. So as you exhale, shift your weight forward into a plank. If you're in downward facing dog, bringing your knee behind your elbow, and then turning your foot towards the left so that you can drop your shin down onto the mat, adjusting everything else back as you settle your hips down. So if this does not work for you, you can be in a seat, left foot on the mat, crossing your right ankle over your left knee and stay here. So both variations are valid. Again, find what works for your body. And now we have lots of variations here. So I want you to play with what you want. You can stay up. You can slowly maybe lower onto your elbows, maybe your chest all the way down to the mat. If you want to work on the quad stretch, we will get to one later. You can bend your knee and maybe reach back if that's available. We'll be here for about three more rounds of breath. So you find what serves your body. If it's in your practice, you can also go into full pigeon pose, which is when you arch and reach back. I cannot do that, so I don't go there, but perfectly fine if you want to. One more round of breath. And then we'll slowly come back to downward facing dog three-legged with the leg raised or to tabletop with again the right leg raised. So you choose your position, tuck your back toes, slowly start to lift your body up, find either tabletop or three-legged dog just for a moment here and we'll step our foot back through but now in between our hands. If you need the mat, drop it to your back knee or you can stay with your knee off the mat and we'll find a lunge. So if your knee's off the mat, maybe you rock back and forth. Or if your knee's on the mat, maybe you lift your chest up, getting into the hip flexor. <sighs> Again, you choose your practice. <sighs> One more moment here. <sighs> and then wherever you are, drop your back knee if it's not already there. Hands come to frame your front foot and slowly start to shift your weight back on an exhale as you rise up onto your front heel, toes in the air, getting a nice calf stretch. You're in Ardha Hanumanasana or half Lord of the Monkey's pose. <sighs> Remembering to reconnect with our breath here. One more round of breath. 
And exhale, start to walk your way back, forward foot back to the mat, and lift up your back knee, and come back to downward facing dog or tabletop pose. And we'll do that pigeon sequence on the other side. So if you already know you need to drop your knees and then come to a seat, go there. Otherwise, everyone inhale, lift the left leg into the sky, maybe bend your knee so that it's nice and open. Again, option to be in tabletop here. If you are in the three-legged dog, try not to have your chest reaching open, but still facing the mat. Stay strong in all 10 fingers. And we'll find our way to our pigeon pose, either coming forward towards a plank, bringing knee and elbow before swinging your foot around and dropping your hips and your leg, or coming to a seat with your right foot on the mat, right knee bent, left ankle cross over right knee. And we'll be here for about five to eight rounds of breath. Again, either up, maybe you drop your chest. Maybe you reach back for your quad. Maybe you do the full pigeon position. And you can change throughout. Three more rounds of breath here. One more round of breath. And then we'll reset into our tabletop, leg extended or three-legged dog. As you're ready, lift everything up or come back to tabletop. Extend your leg to reset and then step your foot between your hands to come to your lunge. Again, maybe you're here rocking back and forth. Maybe you drop your back knee and lift your chest. Sinking the hips down. Whatever version serves you. Let's do one more round of breath here. And everyone drop your back knee if it's not already there. Exhale, hands to mat. Start to make your way back towards our calf stretch. Half splits. And again, if you do have blocks, if you're at home, and you want to make this more available, you can bring those. Should have said that earlier, my bad. One round of breath here. Exhale out. Start to rock yourself back forward, hands come back forward, lift your back leg, make your way back to downward facing dog or tabletop. And we'll all slowly walk back towards the tops of our mats. If you have a mat or a blanket, you can kind of move it out of the way if you need, but we're going to come back into a forward fold. One more little thing here before we come to a seat, probably your favorite part of the practice. Exhale out. And then you can stay where you are on your mat. I'm going to turn again so that you can see me, but we're going to come into Malasana pose. So start to widen your feet out a little bit, turn your toes out, ankles in. If you don't know where Malasana is for you, do a little squat and stretch out the inner parts of your legs. If you have a block, you can sit on it. Or if you know Malasana, Garland Pose is accessible. Find where you feel good and sink your hips down, bringing your hands to your chest, pushing your knees out with your elbows. <sighs> If you want to intensify this, you can always find the extension and the bind. But we'll be here for about four more rounds of breath. So if you're doing the bind, do about two rounds of breath each side. If you're sitting in Malasana, remember to smile. Maybe we've been so focused on following the practice, we've forgotten to use our facial muscles as well. One round of breath. And if you know you wanna sit on a mat, you can find your way there. And we're going to sit our butts down and coming into butterfly pose, bring the soles of our feet together and let our knees open up, maybe grabbing our toes, maybe fluttering here. Finally, the seated portion, right? <laughs> Take a moment here. 
And then let's take our right hand, push gently against our right knee, use our left elbow to kind of hold our other leg down as we lean towards the left, leaning away from the knee that we're pushing against. One more round of breath here. Come back to center, switch it up, and we'll take it to the other side. One more moment here. Bring it up, and now adjust yourself on your mat so that you can extend your legs all the way out. Coming into Paschimottanasana. Take a moment here. If you need a little help under your legs, you can ball your hands into fists and bring them up under your knees and just fold until you arrive. Otherwise, inhale, arms reach up into the sky to sit and exhale, reach for wherever you manage. I was going to say arrive again or reach to wherever is accessible. <sighs> Maybe you bow your head forward. If your hands are just on your shins, that's okay. If you need to bend your knees a little bit, also okay. Again, this is for you. And then we'll do one more seated leg stretch slash twist before we come onto our back. Starting to wind down here, start to lift the spine up. Now bring your right knee into your chest. If you want, you can just hold it here. We're going to turn towards the right. If you want, you can cross it, depending on how available you are. And you can turn or you can bring your left arm up and cross the outside of your elbow to the outside of your right knee, bringing your hand behind you, keeping your ear and your shoulder away from each other. So lots of options here, either just hugging your knee, just twisting. One more round of breath here. And start to come back to center. And let's change it up. Bring your left knee in, so maybe you stay here, turning your chest. Maybe you cross, turn your chest. Maybe you bring right elbow to the outside of your left knee, left hand behind. And maybe you extend here. Remember to smile if you've forgotten. One more round of breath. And then unwind. And we're going to come onto our backs, finally, right? <laughs> You're probably wondering or saying. Let's take a second here, come onto your back. And then let's bring our right knee into our chest once more. And let your hand, if you need to move anything out of the way, do that. Let your left hand come into a T. <sighs> Sorry, your right hand, getting mixed up here. Let your right hand come into a T if you have the space. Otherwise, you can cactus your arm and start to draw your right knee over towards the left as you look towards the right. So left hand grabbing right knee, extending over, twisting over to the left as your right arm is either in a cactus or goalpost or a T. <sighs> One more round of breath here. Start to come back to center, hug your knee in just a little bit more. Exhale, release, let's take it to the other side. Bring your left knee into your chest, nice hug. And now, yes, the left hand goes out to a T or a cactus palm up. Or you can even do cactus palm down, kind of what works with your shoulder mobility and use your right hand to draw your knee over towards the right. If you have enough space. One more round of breath here. And then on your exhale, start to slowly come back. Other little hug. And then we've got two more things here. So if you need to adjust on your mat, do so. And I'll bring both of the feet to the mat, knees bent. And we're going to lift the left one back up, then the right. And now cross your right ankle under your left leg and grab it with your left hand. And now drop the outside of the right leg and the left foot back to the mat. So if that means your hand is adjusting to grab your toes rather than your ankle, that's perfect. And we're working on finding a quad and hip flexor stretch on the right side. So it's kind of making a little triangle. 
And once you have that, if it feels okay, then you can hug or hold your left knee towards your chest with your right hand. It's a pretty intense stretch though, so. Just one more moment here. And release everything, and now we'll find that on the other side. So readjust if you need, and then now bring your knees towards your chest again. Left ankle under right knee, right hand grabs your left ankle or your toes, and then drop everything back to the mat. Right foot to the mat and the outside of the left leg to the mat. And then once you find this, if it feels okay, then you can increase this by holding your right knee closer to your chest with your left hand. It's a pretty intense stretch. One more out of breath here. And on the exhale, slowly release everything. And last stretch. Bring your knees back in your chest more towards your armpits. Keep them bent as you lift the bottoms of your feet to the sky and grab the bottoms of your feet in happy baby and on the balasana. Maybe you'll find movement here, shifting back and forth. Or if there's anything else you want to do in your practice, you can do that. So maybe you do a reclined pigeon, crossing ankle over knee, or maybe you cross both legs and knees and hold there. You can do plow pose if you want by bringing your feet up over your head. So take one more moment here. If you are still in Ananda Balasana, happy baby. And then maybe you start to make your way to Shavasana unless you still wanna move and stretch. Extending everything out. <sighs> or maybe you're still moving and that's okay. Just make sure that you take some time for stillness too after you've done one side or the other of anything else that you need in your practice. Then we'll take a minute or so here. If something isn't feeling good all the way extended, you can have your knees bent. You can also have the soles of your feet together and knees out wide for butterfly pose. Again, as I said, you can do plow pose. Otherwise, just hang out nice and still in Shavasana. Reconnecting with your breath. Maybe your hands are by your side, palms up towards the sky. Maybe they're on your belly button, one on your chest, one on your stomach. And maybe giving thanks to our body for all that it does, especially if you are doing this after a long walk or a hike, being grateful for its movement and mobility. Let's take three more rounds of breath here. And then as you're ready, big powerful sigh out and then maybe start slowly moving the fingers and the toes maybe you stretch up and overhead <sighs> maybe you start to bring your feet to the mat kind of roll side to side if you want like windshield wiper your legs and then maybe you come to one side kind of in the fetal position and then as you are ready, nice and slow, no rush here, make your way back to a seat, sitting in a way that feels comfortable for you. 
<sighs> Maybe we close our eyes again. Maybe we have our hands at our chest or our third eye, the space between our eyebrows. Maybe our hands are in our lap, palms down or up on our knees. I hope that if you are doing this after a walk or a hike that you feel a little more loose, a little more limber and stretched out. As I said, this was pretty much the exact flow I did every day at the end of the day after the Camino de Santiago. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you for sharing this time with me and letting me be a part of your practice. The light in me loves and honors the light in you. Namaste.